Hare Krishna. Welcome back to the Mahabharata character series. We are now in the 14 days war, it is almost noon. Arjuna has penetrated deep into the Kaurava camp, uh, Kaurava formation and he is wreaking havoc single handedly over there. Uh, and Drona has deputed Duryodhana equipping him with his impenetrable armor to as a last ditch measure, measure to try to check Arjuna. And as Arjuna is blowing his conch shell triumphantly after having done the stupendous feat of having checked the Kaurava warriors, the uh, hundreds and hundreds of Kaurava warriors were attacking him while he was charioteerless and cripplingly disadvantaged, but still uh, nobody could wound or fell Arjuna. So, as he is blowing his conch shell and now charging forward through the Kaurava camp, suddenly right in front of him he saw Duryodhana coming from the opposite direction. And Krishna turned to Arjuna and said that, oh just see here, the one who is the core root of the all your sufferings, vomit upon him the wrath that you have held in your heart for 13 years of exile, he deserves to be punished. It is fortunate that he has come in front of you today. Punish him adequately, Krishna said. Arjuna said, yes. And the Kaurava warriors, seeing Duryodhana facing Arjuna, felt felt alarmed. They were surprised that Duryodhana was not fleeing. Duryodhana was ready to fight with Arjuna. And they all came to assist and they came to warn Duryodhana. Duryodhana said, do not fear. He says, I will deal with Partha. Oh Partha, show your prowess and after your prowess exhausted, I will send you to Yama's abode. And Duryodhana and Arjuna started fighting. Duryodhana shot arrows, Arjuna shot arrows and they fought and fought fiercely. Now Duryodhana was as far as archery was concerned, no match to Arjuna. And slowly but surely Arjuna's arrows were too speedy, too many and too sharp. They started breaching through Duryodhana's countering arrows and Duryodhana started getting wounded and he, to great surprise Arjuna's arrows they had no effect on uh, Duryodhana. No, he, what to speak of wounding him, although the arrows hit him he did not even flinch and seeing him like an immovable mountain blocking Arjuna's way, resisting his attacks, the Kauravas who had initially become alarmed that the Kaurava forces started cheering him. And Arjuna shot more arrows with greater force, but none of them had any effect on Duryodhana. And Krishna turned to Arjuna. He said, Arjuna, I have never seen this happen before. Your arrows are capable of penetrating the earth. Are you out of touch? This is not the time to go gentle. O Partha, Arjuna became thoughtful. And he said, I know what has happened. He says, my arrows are capable of penetrating the earth. But the preceptor has put around Duryodhana his own impenetrable armor and because of that my arrows are falling harmlessly. And although he is, he is impenetrable in this armor, still he is a coward and he does not know how to use his armor to fight. Like a woman wearing armor is still a woman, this, this wretch is still a wretch though he may have impregnable armor. See, O so Keshava, how I fell him in spite of his having his armor. Duryodhana was arrogantly shooting arrows, uh, feeling invincible. And Arjuna took careful aim and he shot arrows straight at the fingers of Duryodhana. Now, the armor covered his full body, but just the front part of the fingers was. Uh, uncovered and that was the only vulnerable part and Arjuna with his sharpness had detected that weak point. In a war the strategy is hit where it hurts, hit where it hurts and Arjuna took that strategy and he hit Arjuna, he hit Duryodhana and Duryodhana screamed in pain as the arrows pierced through his fingers into his hands and he dropped the bow and arrow and started shaking his hands in pain and seeing Duryodhana discomfited, uh, disarmed, in pain, Krishna and Arjuna laughed and charged past him. 
So, a devotee may come across what seems an impenetrable barrier, but still by Krishna's grace, the devotee finds some way to keep moving forward. Just as the rubber keeps moving towards the ocean always, some way or the other, up, down, right, left or through. So like that, a devotee's consciousness keeps moving towards Krishna. A devotee keeps finding some way to keep serving Krishna always. And Duryodhana was left licking his wounds as Arjuna kept charging ahead. And in the meanwhile, as Arjuna had been blowing his conch shell, Yudhishthir had heard and he started feeling anxiety. He's, is Arjuna blowing his conch shell to indicate that he needs help? Arjuna had actually been blowing the conch shell to convey uh, his victory against his opponents. But Ayudhishthira was anxious and he turned to Satyaki and told Satyaki, you know, it is time for you to repay your debt to your teacher. Please go into the Kaurava ranks following Arjuna and render him assistance. Today is in, is in the need, the greatest need for your assistance. Satyaki was torn. Before Arjuna had departed, Satyaki, uh, Arjuna had told Satyaki, be by the side of the king and protect him. He says, Drona might, Drona had still had the vow of arresting Yudhishthir and Drona might try something. So, be by his side I, when I, while I am not there to guard him. Satyaki, being conflicted, told his concern to Yudhishthir. And then Yudhishthir said, do not worry, O Satyaki, here there is Bhima and Drishtudyumna and there are many warriors to protect me. Drishtudyumna is destined to be the killer of uh, Drona. Surely Drona will not be able to break through and come to him, uh, come to me through him. And moreover, he will be mostly occupied in combating, in defending Karana, in defending Jayadrath as Arjuna charged towards him. So, you do not have to worry about me, Satyaki nodded. He knew that if he, did, if he was asked to go into the military, uh, into the enemy formation, if he did not go, he would be considered a coward. And he, from his heart, also wanted to assist Arjuna. And he charged into the uh, cover of formation and he followed the trail of devastation that was still visible, which Arjuna had brought as he was going through. And uh, he just now, of course, it was not just dead corpses, there were cover of warriors, and there our plan was to trap Arjuna inside. So, the, their formation was still there. Arjuna, uh, Satyaki broke through that formation and with thunderous speed he charged behind Arjuna, and within an hour or so, he reached. Arjuna. Ar as Satyaki charged into the Kaurava formation, at that time uh, Yudhishthira was plagued by another anxiety. So, Satyaki was also a formidable warrior, but he was still young. And he said that uh, yesterday another young warrior, Abhimanyu, had gone in and he perished. I have sent Arjuna to assist Sat Sat Satyaki to assist Arjuna, but what if Satyaki himself comes in danger? He turned towards Bhima and requested Bhima, can you go in? And Bhima charged and he was just waiting, itching for a fight and he broke through and in a short while Bhima reached I could, by the side of Arjuna and Satyaki. Satyaki and when Arjuna they had met for the first moment, Arjuna had been concerned initially why Satyaki had left Yudhishthira's side. But when, he had ex when Satyaki explained, uh, Arjuna was delighted and he told him, good that you are here, assist me for the task ahead of me is formidable. And as they were talking and charging forward, suddenly they heard the tumultuous conch of Bhima blowing. And they turned and saw Bhima charging towards them. And the Kaurava warriors and soldiers all fleeing or falling around him. They were, uh, Arjuna's face lit up and he said, Oh Satyaki, he says, with you and Bhima by my side, surely victory is guaranteed. The Kauravas will not be able to resist my attack. And together these three Maharatas started charging into the Kaurav camp. And the Kaurav uh, soldiers, Arjuna, uh, no, as a uh, normal days was difficult to deal with. Arjuna, enraged by the death of Abhimanyu, was unbearable. Arjuna coupled with Bhima and Satyaki was impossible to face. They all fled in terror. And seeing this, the Kaurav Maharatha started coming forward. Now, Karana came forward and as Karana came, uh, Bhima turned and challenged Karana. 
Now Krishna and Arjuna are seeing this, kept charging ahead. They both knew that a great burden had been placed on Bhima, because Karana was a formidable archer. And Bhima and Karana fought and fought and fought. And we discussed how Bhima overcame Karana, and right in front of his eyes, one by one by one, thirty Kaurava brothers he killed. And Karana himself was bested, wounded, and Karana fled. And Bhima again joined Arjuna. And Arjuna kept charging forward, charging forward. And as Bhima was also, who those who were trying to check Arjuna, Bhima was destroying them. And Satyaki was also by his side. And as Satyaki was fighting, Bhurishrava, a formidable Kaurav, a formidable Maharatha, he came forward now. Actually, Bhurishrava was a devotee. He was the son of Somadatta, who was also a devotee. And who was he was the son of Bahalika, and Bahalika was actually the um, uncle of Bhishma, the brother of Shantanu. So now Bhurishrava and Satyaki started fighting, and they fought, fought, fought fiercely. It was a ma it was a battle in which neither of them seemed to be getting the upper hand. And finally, their attack was so fierce that both their chariots got destroyed. And they got off the chariots, and then they charged towards each other. They started fighting with maces, and then the maces broke, and they started fighting with each other, wrestling, fist with their fists, beating and pounding each other. And as they fought and fought, slowly Satyaki started tiring. It taken it had taken a superhuman effort to break through all the Kaurav formations and come by the side of Arjuna. And after that superhuman effort, he is. His bodily strength started weakening, and seeing him weakening, Bhushrava increased his effort and started beating and pounding Satyaki. And as he pounded, Satyaki blow after blow after blow fell on Satyaki. Satyaki fell on the ground unconscious, and Satyaki reeled unconscious on the ground. Bhushrava took a sword. Actually, he caught Satyaki and dragged him along the ground, kicked him. How uh, they these two had a history behind them. Long ago in a swamvar, Satyaki's father Sini and Bhurishrava's father Somadatta had had a battle among themselves, and at that time Sini had defeated Somadatta, and he had defeated him, kicked him, and dragged him along the ground. So at that time Somadatta had performed tapasya, and by worshiping the gods, he had got a blessing. That his son would met the same treatment on Sini's son. So now Bhurishrava did what was ordained, and as he, as Satyaki was senseless, Bhurishrava picked up a sword and he raised his hand to lop off the head of Satyaki. And as Arjuna was engaged in his own fight, Krishna was not only expertly driving the chariot, but Krishna was also keeping an eye on everything. And Krishna alerted Arjuna, "Just see, Satyaki is in mortal danger." He is fighting, risking his life for your sake. It behooves you to save him. Arjuna turned around and saw Bhurishrava had raised his hand up, about to kill Satyaki. Immediately, Arjuna took a sharp arrow and discharged it. And the arrow went in blinding speed. And the arm that had been raised to kill Satyaki, that arm was lopped off. The sword was still in the hand, and with the sword, the hand fell down. So, uh, Bhurishrava was shocked. He said, "Who could have done such a despicable deed without warning a warrior, just attacking him and lopping off his arm like that? Who could have done such a brutal thing?" He looked around, and he saw Arjuna in the distance watching him. He says, "Oh, Arjuna, I am shocked that you could have done such a egregious violation of the Shatriya codes. I was in combat with another person, and without warning, you attacked me." Where did you learn such foul tactics? Was it from Pandu, or was it from Bhishma, or was it from Indra? I don't think any of them would have taught you this, because they all know the codes of conduct for Kshatriyas. I think the person who must have taught you this is Krishna, because the Yadus are known to be an evil-minded, wicked, cunning dynasty. And Arjuna, you have become spoiled by the association of Krishna, and because of this. You have done such a wild deed. Did your name was spoiled forever because of the way you attacked 
uh, warrior without warning him. So, Arjuna remained grave and he said, Oh, Bhurishrava, it is clear that as the body weakens, even when it is an intellect, intellect also weakens. And that is why you are chastising me uh, for no fault of mine. He said, You were attacking and killing a warrior who was unconscious, unprepared for your attack and who was senseless. You know, as you were about to attack and kill someone, I have done the same thing to you. He says, I have taken a vow that as long as I am fit, I will always protect my dependents. Satyaki was risking his life fighting on my behalf and it was my duty to protect him. As Bhurusharva would got up angrily, enraged at what he felt was a colossal injustice, his one hand has gone off, but when he heard Arjuna's words spoken without malice, he fell on his knees and Arjuna continued, you know, Bhurishrava, tell me what would you have done if you were in my situation and your dependent was senseless and was being killed like this. As he heard Bhurishrava heard Arjuna's words, he realized the truth of those words and he, he knew that the arm cut off and already he had a fierce fight with Satyaki in which also he had become somewhat wounded and the arm wound was severe, blood was just gushing out. He saw, he knew that his life was ending. So, with difficulty with his left hand, he took uh, arrows, he placed them on the ground and he made them into a makeshift sit, seat and he positioned himself on that and got, entered into mystic trance, determined to leave his body in trance. And Arjuna told Krishna, Arjuna told Subhishrava that, Oh, Bhurishra, you are the respect and affection I bear for you is the same as I bear for my own brothers. You have led a virtuous life. Go now to heaven and attain the fruit of your virtue. Krishna was right next to him, spoke to Bhurishrava. He said that you have led a life of sacrifice and virtue and you have worshipped me too. He says, therefore, assuming a spiritual form like mine, you know, go to my supreme destination, which is sought for even by Brahma. He says, alighting on the back of Garuda, you will now ascend to that eternal abode. Thus, he was blessed by the great devotee Arjuna and by the greatest Lord Krishna. And Guru Shiva closed his eyes and in trance, he left his body. In the meanwhile, Satyaki regained his consciousness. And the first thought that came to him, apart from the pain that was there racking all his body, was the, was the humiliation that he had suffered at the hands of, of Bhurishrava. He had been kicked and dragged like an animal. So, a rage burst out of him. And when he saw Bhurishrava sitting weaponless, motionless, he immediately swung, grabbed a sword that was lying over there and charged towards Bhurishrava. Seeing uh, Satyaki's terrible intention, several warriors shouted, Stop! Stop! Fire! But Satyaki, without hearing anyone, was charged towards Bhurishrava and lopped off his head in a single move. And the warriors who were discussing earlier, they had felt that Arjuna, what he had done was wrong. And now when they saw what Satyaki had done, he said, oh, Fire! 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 What a terrible deed this is! You know, he was unresisting, he was in meditation, how could you have killed him? Satyaki turned around, angrily he said, you know, I had taken a vow long ago that anyone who humiliates me by dragging me and kicking me, I will kill him. I had to honor my vow and ultimately everyone is moved by destiny. You want to find faults with me for killing a warrior who would otherwise have killed me, I, 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 even when I was senseless. He, he would have killed me when I was senseless if Arjuna had not saved me. And now when he is senseless, I am paying him back. You know, there is no fault in what I have done. You are trying to say that I am faulty. Where were you when Abhimanyu was killed by six of you all together? And he brazenly challenged all of them. The, none of the Kaurav warriors felt that Abhimanyu, the Satyaki had done the right thing. But Bhurishrava was dead. And after a moment of respectful silence in honor of the departed warrior, 
the hostility is res resumed in dead earnest. And Krishna told Arjuna, Arjuna, there is no time to waste, charge onwards. And Arjuna went forward. In the meanwhile, Duryodhana was horrified as he got the news, 30 of his brothers had been killed. And he realized nobody was able to stop Arjuna. And he started panicking. He said, wondering, what should I do? And as he looked at the sun, he saw the sun was nearing the horizon. He felt that still there was hope. If one mighty effort was done, if all the Kauravas charged combinedly towards Arjuna, surely he will not be able to penetrate and reach Jayadrath in time. With this plan, um, he arranged and Ashwatthama and Kripa charged on Arjuna from the two sides. And Duryodhana, still wearing his impenetrable armor along with Karana, attacked him from the front. And Shalya issued a challenge from him from, behind, from the rear, shooting hundreds of arrows of him at the, at the same time. You know, Arjuna, being attacked thus, would have been hemmed in, but he had two competent assistants. So, Satyaki took on the challenge of Shalya, and he also, along with him, Rishasen was also there, son of uh, Karana, and Satyaki took on both of them. And from the front, Bhima took on Karana, and Arjuna checked everybody else and kept charging forwards. He knew there was no time to lose, and Arjuna was fighting so forcefully that it was impossible to check him. A Drona was there in the last line of command as Arjuna kept breaking through the Kaurava formation and coming close, close, close. Now he could see Jayadrath standard, he could see Jayadrath also. And knowing that the, la the day was ending and his quest was also ending, he charged forward. Drona realizing that things were desperate, he got several Maharathas. He, his son, Ashwatthama, Kripa, Shalya, Karana, Duryodhana, all of them attacked Arjuna and so severe was the attack that there was practically a dark, dense, blinding cloud of arrows all around Arjuna. Arjuna was so hemmed in totally that he could not even see Jayadrath, although Jayadrath was within seeing distance. Arjuna was countering all the arrows with his full skill and zeal, but time was rushing away. Arjuna started despairing, so close yet so far and he realized that the sun would set and he would not be able to reach. As he was despairing, Krishna realized, recognized the predicament of his friend and he immediately summoned the Sudarshan Chakra. As that Chakra came, Krishna discharged that Chakra and he discharged the Chakra not at the Kauravas to kill them. He wanted Arjuna to redeem his vow and he knew that Arjuna could do it. So rather than sending the Chakra at the Kauravas, he raised, sent the chakra high in the sky and it covered the sun and there was a artificial eclipse created. As the darkness spread on the war field, suddenly it had almost come close to twilight, twilight to sunset and the cover was thought that it is the sun has set and they started celebrating jubilantly. He says, Oh, Arjuna is dead, Arjuna is dead. He has failed to redeem, fulfill his vow. And Jayadrath, who had been beside himself with anxiety uh, throughout this long day, he started coming forward and started jeering Arjuna. He said, oh, Arjuna, you are going to kill me? Now you will die. I will light the funeral pyre and you will ascend in it. As he was mocking Arjuna like this, Arjuna uh, flummoxed, put his bow down. And as he lowered his bow, Krishna told in an urgent voice to Arjuna, Arjuna, there is still time. Place your best arrow on your bow, imbue it with the Brahmastra and shoot it at Jayadrath. And Krishna further warned that Jayadrath has been given a benediction by his father who has worshipped the gods, that anyone who causes Jayadrath's head to fall on the ground, that person will Well, his own head will crack into a thousand pieces. Vidakshatra, Jayadrath's father, is doing austerities with Samant Panchak. So, shoot the arrow in such a way that Jayadrath's head will go to Samant Panchak and fall in Vidakshatra's lap. Now, when Arjuna was told by Krishna, shoot the arrow, now it is again the Kshatriya codes to shoot the arrow after the sun had been set, uh, sun had set, and that is why the Kauravas had lowered their guard. 
but Arjuna did not question. Arjuna knew Krishna must be having some plan uh, and he obeyed. He put the bow on the arrow, uh, arrow on the bow and he aimed and as Arjuna was aiming, Krishna removed the Swarajan Chakra and the last remaining rays of the sun started streaming across the battlefield. And right in front of the eyes of Duryodhana, Drona, Karana, Ashwatthama, Kripa, Shalya, Dushyasana, Arjuna's arrow sped through the sky with blinding speed, went and hit Jayadrath on his head and his throat, <coughs> bejeweled, crowned head, fled through the, sped through the sky, disappearing far into the horizon. <coughs> it went and fell on the lap of Radhakshatra, was deep in meditation, shocked to see something on his lap falling suddenly. He opened his eyes and when he saw that it was a bloody head, he knocked it off his lap and as the head fell on the <coughs> ground, the result was that his own head, by the boon which he had himself got, his own head cracked into thousand pieces and he died. So again, the boons of the demoniac backfire against them and cause their own destruction. The Kauravas wailed in sorrow, realizing that, Arju that the, sun, the darkness had been Arj Krishna's trick. They knew that Arjuna had redeemed his vow and they had first suffered their worst reversal. Not only had 30 <coughs> of the Kaurava warriors died, but along with that one whole Akshauni had been killed by Arjuna and further warriors, had, further army had been killed by Satyaki and of course Bhima and Krishna and Arjuna embraced each other. He says, Oh Partha, you have attained a stupendous, you have done a stupendous feat today, but nobody else would have been able to do it. And Arjuna told Krishna that it is by your grace, one whom you favor, nothing is impossible for him. By your grace I have achieved this. And in this way victorious they returned. We will continue in our next session. Thank you. Hare Krishna.